So today we'll be riding around McKinley Hill to Gig City, starting off at Venice Grand Canal Mall. We'll be seeing how the Royal Alloy GP180 fares in city traffic. Hi, I'm Matthew with Top Bikes PH, and this is Top Bikes Top 5. For today's episode, we've got the Royal Alloy GP180. If you're in the market for an authentic retro scooter, this might just be the one for you. Before we begin, mga katropa, don't forget to like, comment, follow, and subscribe para updated ka on the latest motorcycle news and reviews. Stay tuned till the end of the video to know how you can win a limited edition Top Bikes jersey. So first off, we've got an authentic old school design that even non-riders will recognize as a classic. I mean, just look at it. It looks like it came straight out in the 1960s. With its all-metal body, stitched leather-ish seats, chrome accents, stock luggage rack, and of course, premium badging that is not just a bunch of stickers. We've got a very nice headlight, nice, lots of nice detail. We've got integrated turn signals that don't ruin the look of the scooter. You even got this intake that isn't actually an intake, but of course, it looks good nonetheless. This nice rubber piping kind of accent, and an overall aesthetically pleasing design with nothing out of place. Overall, it's a stunner wherever you look. So this scooter is nice and comfy, whether it be for city riding or for longer rides. As you can see, however, the scooter is a bit tall compared to other units out there. I stand at around 5'7", and even I'm on my tiptoes. Mostly because of the height and because of the wide seat. The width also means more comfort, however, and the seat is nice and well cushioned for, well, long hours in the saddle. The floorboards are nice and wide, so you can put your feet wherever. The riding position is also nice and neutral. And because it's sort of tall, you get a nice, good commanding view of the road. So you get a decent amount of power from the 169cc single-cylinder engine. You get around 11.8 horsepower and 12.5 Nm torque. It's not the fastest bike out there, not even by scooter terms. But it's not about all-out speed, it's about character, it's about response, it's about feel. All of which the GP180 has in space. You've got a decent sounding engine, a responsive throttle and a good amount of grunt for anything daily riding might throw at you. Whether it be going up inclines, overtaking someone out on the road, or whatever it may be, the bike has more than enough grunt for whatever you need it to do. Plus, it sounds lively while doing it. So the bike's handling is nimble and agile. The bike feels light on its feet and it's very easy to turn. With these handlebars, you get a good amount of leverage over the bike whether when you're trying to pull a U-turn, trying to pull into parking, or just riding around town. You've got very good brake feel at both ends of the bike, thanks to disc brakes at the front and at the rear, both of which are supplemented with Bosch ABS. And of course, we can't forget about the anti-dive suspension. So no matter how hard you brake, no matter what you do, the bike will not dive forwards. Even under emergency braking situations, the bike will stay completely level. The GP180 comes with a good amount of bells and whistles. First and foremost is a lean sensor that turns off the engine in the event of a crash. Other features include this front cargo hook, this lockable storage space, this actually pretty cool suction cup seat, and this rear passenger carrier rack, great for all your picnic needs. Other than that, we've got these cool fold-out passenger foot peg. Build quality-wise, everything is very solid, well put together, and overall excellent. All the buttons feel solid, nothing looks like it's gonna fade the next couple of years. The metal feels like actual proper metal. The metal body is sturdy and solid without being too heavy. The seats, I'm not sure if this is, this is like actual leather, but it feels good to the touch. All the mounting points are nice. They don't rock around, they don't wiggle. And overall, everything is up to British manufacturing standards despite the bike being built in Thailand. So overall, the Royal Alloy GP180. If you're in the market for an authentic old school scooter with modern features, this might just be right up your alley. I mean, take it from me. I'm not a big scooter guy, but even I'm tempted. It's cool, it's sleek, it's got good features, a decent amount of power, and a very affordable 175,000 peso price tag. So if this is your kind of thing, go check out Royal Alloy Philippines. Oh, mga katropa. 
don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Kung may gusto ko yung ipa-feature sa amin next time, don't forget to let us know in the comment section down below. If you've made it till the end of this video, comment what you love about the Royal Alloy GP180. And the top 5 comments will win a limited edition top bike jersey. And don't forget to use the hashtag Katropang Top Bikes in your comment. So, hanggang sa susunod na top 5, this has been Matthew. I'll see you next time.